For all of you out there who have a sincere interest in learning about hypnosis, my advice to you is to start with the simple stuff, the easy stuff, okay? Don't start trying to hypnotize some really smart friend of yours or that really stupid friend of yours. Instead, start by trying to hypnotize inanimate objects, okay? Start here, then work your way up to mud slugs and then cats, fern, plants, and then finally that dumb friend of yours. Hypnotizing objects makes a lot of sense when you think about it, and you will, and I'm gonna think about you thinking about it too, just so you know, because they're already half asleep. They're inanimate. They're already kind of sort of already very receptive to things because they don't have much of a free will or a say in what you do with them. I've got something in my eye, hold on. There, okay. So today I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hypnotize this marker, watch the marker, hypnotize it. Here we go. Sleep, you getting sleepy? Sleepy, that's it, oh he's looking tired. Sleep now. Just like, listen, listen. And now that he's sleeping, and it is a he, I can tell just by the shape. Now that he's sleeping, he's gonna be very receptive. I'm gonna try to do something very weird that if you were awake, it would hurt him. I'm gonna try to get the coin to melt inside the cap, okay? Keep an eye on the coin and the cap. Watch, you'll hear the moment that the coin passes inside the cap, just like that. The coin is inside there, right inside. You can't see it, but it was indeed inside that cap. The premise of this trick has been kicking around for at least 20 years. I've seen a bunch of different magicians have their own handling and different ideas of having a coin appear inside the cap of a pen or a marker, whatever. Personally, I've never believed it. And that's a big problem. The stuff they've done has looked good. It can look absolutely perfect in using super, different kinds of clips and different kinds of special devices and using your sleeves. It can look like this coin really does come out of the cap. But just because it looks like it comes out of the cap, it doesn't mean people are gonna believe it ever was inside the cap. So I think it's a lovely idea, sort of a magician's fantasy, but I think having performed this for people many, many times, bars, clubs, all these different kinds of places, um, I deliberately want to use a handling that had a bit of a sucker quality, that, allowed, that sort of guided people in a certain direction so they, the, the idea of the coin being inside the cap wasn't required to carry too much weight, in a sense. I also want it to look really good though, so a subtlety I use in this is called the Ramsey Subtlety, created by a famous magician of history, Ramsey. Um, he created this, it's not Gordon Ramsey. If it was Gordon Ramsey, where's that God? Where's your four of clubs? Where the is that goddamn three of spades? It's not like that, okay? So, the Ramsey subtlety. What's wonderful about this is if the coin is in your basic finger palm, okay? If it's in your basic pink finger palm, you curled your fingers and you lift your hand up. You will see, if I got the angle right, it's not too iffy. People can see the palm and they will swear the hand is empty, but in fact, you've got the coin concealed up there, okay? So that's one of the keys to this trick. Let's go on down, Christopher, my brother, and really walk through this thing. So, and before I forget, you can also incorporate a lighter in this. Obviously, you can borrow a quarter, and if someone's got a cigarette lighter, you can have them wave the quarter over to soften the quarter or soften the marker cap, okay? So that's options you can do, and this works beautifully. If you wanna do a magic trick at school, and you only have to say a word with this, if you wanna do a trick at school, uh, and without saying a word, this is a beautiful example, or at work too, obviously, anywhere there's a pen and you borrow a coin. So, what am I doing? First, I start off by talking, to, first I want them to, I wanna say beforehand so it's clear to them the kind of BS I'm trying to sell them, okay? That this is gonna end up in here. You could even have people say, look, you know, does it fit inside there? There's no way to get it in, but I'm gonna try to get it in, etc., etc. okay? Now, first I wanna get the coin in finger palm for that beautiful display using the Ramsey subtlety. So, First thing I wanna do is take the coin and apparently put my hand. Now, this can take years of practice just to do a convincing place of the coin, okay? You can even add a little distance to really sell it. And it's all about putting focus here, display it, and when you display it, don't curl your fingers, really flat. That, sh that suggests you have no control over it. So it's flat, then you turn and these naturally curl as the coin apparently drops into that hand, okay? 
Again, this is just a finger palm vanish, but boy, there's so much use for it. So I want them to start by believing the coins in the left hand when in fact it's in the right. First stop, okay? Then I say you're gonna actually hear the moment the coin uh, passes magically inside the cap. I love that. That's a beautiful example of using sound to convince people. It's another, so first they see it get put in. Second, they hear the coin inside. And of course, all I'm doing is, and if you were to hit this, again, don't be a, you know, too many magicians think, okay, or young magicians think, oh, I have to keep the hand flat and I have to make it look very, no, no, no. The most natural way, if you were gonna tap this into your fist, would be to just hit it with your curled fingers. And that's all I'm doing here. But because the end of the marker hits the coin, you have this beautiful illusion, okay? And you do wanna keep this hand relaxed, that's for sure. So it's put, it's here. Sorry, I actually hit the palm there. There, that totally convinces it. Now, they don't believe for a second that the coin is now in the cap. They don't believe it. They just heard the coins in the hand so that when you take it out and you say, yep, it's inside there, they don't think the coin's still down here. They know it, okay? This is the detail that I've added to this that I think psychologically makes it a much more deceptive trick and satisfying. You're here, it's inside here, like this. You take it awkwardly there, come over here, and again, nobody thinks the quarter, everyone knows exactly where the quarter is. It's a pretty lame start, but your commitment is what makes it work. You're here, now you're gonna come up, and this is something that's gonna be harder to see on camera here with a YouTube unblinking camera, but you wanna raise this up so it's looking them right in the eye. You're trying to have them say, you can't see it inside there, but while they're looking in here, they're gonna immediately take in the fact that it's not here, and they don't expect it to be here. They know it's there. So all of these little details add up to a beautiful illusion. Now to finish, Sometimes I have them cup their hands, or if there is a, a coffee cup sitting there, uh, ideally empty, um, or it, on the table, or just on, if you're sitting around at school, just onto the floor, whatever you want, what you're gonna do is go from this position and down and give a shake, okay? And if you, as you do that, what you wanna kinda do is maybe a little, not drop the coin straight down, because it's gonna fall from here, and the, the illusion can work, but it's not gonna be as convincing. But if you give it a shake as if you're propelling the coin on a slight angle, you'll find this transition from here to there will work much better, okay? So you're here, you show it, they see the empty palm, you turn, you toss it, coin falls out like that, and you look people in the eyes at that moment. They're gonna be shocked that it actually came out of the cap because they were sure it's over here the entire time. So the psychology works so well. You do this, and then I put this on here like this, and I put that down there, and then I open my hand. And I don't do it in kind of like a, ta-da, you're a loser. I do it in kind of a, it comes down like that, and I just open both hands and show them. So I really work to make sure the psychology of all this supports this really pretty visual and impromptu piece of coin magic. For all of you out there who are interested in learning about hypnosis, my advice to you is to smart, is to smart Clark. Invit, Aka. It was at that point his brain snapped and he never returned. Thank you so much for watching everyone. A uh, bunch of you have been asking about the weekly contests. Uh, I've been doing them for a long time, but just to be clear, so every week here on my channel, I give away some of my magic tricks, usually a dozen, a DVD, a trick or whatever. And then what I do, often on the Tuesday, you'll find directly below the video, there'll be a mention of what the contest is about. It'll be a question. It could be, uh, have you ever worn cowboy boots on your hands? It could be, uh, you know, who's your favorite magician? It could be any one of these questions. You'll usually find them on a Tuesday. Directly below the video will be the question of that week and you leave a comment. Now on the Tuesday also, uh, usually pinned to the top directly below the video, is also a list of the winners from the previous week. And you always can, if you won, you just send in your name and your, uh, your shipping address to contact at sankeymagic.com. Someone on my team will get it and then we'll ship out your prize. I hope that answers all your questions. Uh, thank you for watching as always. And if you like this video, let's, let's try this week to really slam that like button. Make sure you hit the like button. And of course, as always, if you're into magic and you're into mentalism and you're into nutty comedy, make sure click that subscribe button.